Dr. Paul Vincent Marachari, who is currently working as the managing director of his family business. So, Doctor, uh, can you give us a brief of your business? <laughs> sure, uh, Johan. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your interview. Uh, so, the the company that I work for is called Anthea Aromatics Private Limited. And uh, we are a specialty chemicals uh, manufacturer located in Mumbai. Uh, the company was uh, started in 1991, 1992 uh, by my father, by, uh, you know, by, by our father, Dr. Vincent Paul. And um, so from 1992, my brother Matthew Manacheri also joined my father. And, uh, you know, and it's been, so it's been about 29, 30 years that we've been in existence now. Okay. Um, our, our company today has uh, a few, uh, group, uh, two group, uh, three group companies, one of which is called uh, DRT Anthea, which is a 50-50 joint venture with a French company called DRT. And uh, a second group company is uh, called Catacin specialty chemicals private limited which in which um, uh, this uh, chemical company called solvay invested to take a 25 percent stake and 25.1 percent to be technical and uh, then we have another group company called crown chemicals um, which is a hundred percent subsidiary of anthea so we have this is what we call the anthea group of companies okay and uh, yeah so that that that's about it. So we make we make uh, specialty chemicals. We started out with specialty chemicals, which were primarily focused on the fragrance and flavor industry. Um, and but today we make chemicals which are used in addition to fragrance and flavor, which is our primary focus. Uh, also, chemicals that are used in um, pharma uh, as in pharmaceutical in intermediates and in agrochemicals and other specialty chemicals. Okay. That sounds great. So how have you built your family business with your father and brother over the years? So, um, you know, by, by the time I came back from the US in uh, 2001, um, I think, you know, the, the, the basic, uh, the basic, everything in the family business was al already kind of set up. We had, uh, you know, we had a uh, good, um, uh, uh, we had good products, we had uh, good profitability, and we had a good team. And uh, so I came back from the US in 2001, and I've been working with my father and my brother to build the business since then. Um, so it's, you know, it's... Uh, uh, and in addition to my father and brother, so actually, although my father started the company in 1991, with uh, close family and friends, but in um, you know the the business in the early days where there was a lot of struggle, and we took on partners who have since become like family. But uh, we took on partners in 1995. So there was a there was a Hindu family and a Muslim family who came on board, and we are of course Christian, um, who came on board in 1995. And so that actually the shareholding from 1995 was these three families uh, who, who came together and uh, we've tried to build this business. Okay. So it's three other families have come together and are yeah. supporting the businesses. Two, two other families and us and our family as well. Cool. And, and since then in, uh, in 2016, we also got private equity uh, into the company so which means today you know that there are a lot of shareholders that Matthew and I are accountable to because we are continuing as the whole time directors who kind of uh, you know run the business and on the day to day operations of the business so great so what has been your experience studying for your PhD in the US and what guidance would you like to give students who would like to do the same? Okay. Um, 
I, I I think the the my uh, my studies in the U.S. I was um, I was lucky to get into this university because I really wasn't you know back in those days, um, Johan. There was no internet, and you know people were not as aware. Kids were not as aware as they are today. So um, I, I you know I I wasn't maybe as purposeful in the choice of my university as kids today are. But um, I was lucky to get into a very uh, into a good university, which. Uh, but at that time, honestly, the thing is because, you know, we were we were struggling financially. My main uh, my main aim was I needed to get into a university which gave me a full scholarship. And what I realized was when I got into this program, which gave me uh, which was for a PhD, it gave me a full scholarship from day one. It gave me a research scholarship from day one. So. I think that guided my, uh, you know, I wasn't as informed as kids are today. Kids today can do a lot more research and, you know, hone in on the university that they really want based on their specialization and what they want to do. But things uh, th things worked out. I went, um, I got this uh, scholarship at Yale. I finished my PhD there. And then after that, I worked for four years. Uh, the first year was, uh, you know, implant training, uh, the one year, which is like a training that you get after you're this thing. And then I did, then I got one H1B visa that uh, my company had sponsored me for. And then I realized, you know, everything was fine. Um, I was making good money and, you know, I was basically living a very comfortable life, taking flying lessons and this and that and, you know, spending my money. But uh, I thought that I didn't, I lacked uh, purpose. So, uh, and I always wanted to come back and be with my family. So I, um, in 2001, after when my second, when my first, uh, when my H-1B visa was getting over, uh, and, uh, you know, of course the company said, we'll sponsor you, we'll get you on an accelerated program for a green card and things like that. But one of the things I guess, you know, even kids today need to realize is, you can't have your foot in two canoes, you know, because if the two canoes start, uh, you know, diverging, then you'll be, you'll end up doing, you'll, you'll be ending up doing like a full split or something like that. So you need to get onto one canoe. And the one canoe that I chose to get onto then was to come back and be with my uh, father and brother in the family business that they had built up. So, um, my my advice for kids today, and you know, I, uh, I I guess you may be about the same age. My sons and my son uh, Joshua is 14 years old now. He'll be 15 in September, and he's in the 10th grade. Uh, Matthew's daughter is, uh, you know, in the 11th grade. So my advice today is for kids today is find your passion, find what you're really good at. You know, don't. You don't need to follow your father or your grandfather or anybody into business. Find what you are really good at and um, do it 100%. And more likely than not, I mean, in anything, in business and anything, you need a lot of luck to su survive and to succeed. And we've had our share of luck, which is why we are where we are today. But if you do something that you're good at and you get lucky, you can really um, do something, you know. So if you're prepared to take those risks, follow what you're good at, follow your heart. And, you know, your parents might give you a safety net so you'll never fall so low that, you know, that, that you'll, you'll be struggling for your next meal. So since you have that, uh, try to do something uh, spectacular, okay? I don't know any any specific question. That's very general, but if you have anything, I'd, I'd uh, be happy. Cool. Okay. I don't have heart. any questions. Yeah. Okay. 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 And then success and money and everything else will follow. Okay. So thank you, doctor. Thank you so thank you, doctor Paul. Thank you so much for your insights and thank you so much for your advice. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Yeah, take care, take care of your hands, uh, you know, you and your family, stay safe, look after your parents, and uh, yeah, probably after all of this is over, okay, take care, we'll meet up sometime. Cool. Bye. So.